Ladies and gents, I am back from my three week vacation. Uh, as you probably noticed, the lack of content from the channel, and there was a lot of you who didn't even notice I was gone. Nonetheless, I am back on the grind. We're gonna kick off with season seven of Setup Wars. Welcome to episode 331. Sit back and relax, because you know what time it is. So you just finished building a PC and you're greeted with this horrendous message on your screen. Well, fear not because I have an easy solution for you guys. Head on over to yourcdkey.com and pick up a Windows 11 or Windows 10 Pro CD key for around 15 bucks. Just put in the code TS20 to get that extra 20% off and afterwards they will email you the CD key and all you have to do is go into your activation settings on Windows and put it in. Afterwards, the watermark will disappear and you can enjoy all the features from Windows. Kicking off the episode is a stunning, one-of-a-kind setup that was built by Evangelina and her dad, which apparently was also inspired by me and Setup Wars. It took them both nine months to finish for the purpose of gaming, schoolwork, and watching movies and anime. Right off the bat, the first thing that stands out to me is the custom lighting on the wall. And it's actually an interesting process how this was done. You see, these are not just any ordinary LED strips that they attached on the wall. So basically, her dad cut grooves into the wall, that way the LED strips can be recessed inside for that super clean, flush look. And they added a wall shelf to cover the damage to the wall and hide the cables from the LED strips. I gotta say, that's the first time I've seen this and I do have mixed feelings about it. On one end, it's very creative and certainly adds a unique element to the setup. But on the other end, it's not exactly executed flawlessly. I see that he did his best to diffuse the lighting using frosted channels, but the hotspots are still visible. My guess is that the channels they used were too narrow, and the distance between the LED strip and the frosted piece is not far enough to perfectly diffuse the lights. I recommend going with these specifically next time because they are much taller, providing more distance from the LEDs to properly diffuse them. Another thing is symmetry. Like I understand symmetry was not possible due to the setup being very close to the wall, but I would have at least tried and made each length the same. Regardless, it doesn't change the fact that these look pretty damn awesome. And it's the first time I've seen this on setup wars. Underneath the lights, you got a 27 inch Odyssey G7 as a primary monitor with a smartphone attached to the side for multitasking, which is genius. If you guys wanna do the same thing for your setup, you can pick up one of these arms from Amazon and stick it on the back of either your laptop or your desktop monitor. Moving on to the peripherals, have you seen a more organized set of gear? I mean, everything is pristine. She made cutouts for every piece of gear with a matching grommet as well. This is quite literally a work of art. For audio, she's rocking the Edifier x claim speakers for primary use, but uses the Kraken Xs for gaming, which she can easily swap to using the quick release method she created. I didn't expect anything less with the cable management. If she was able to keep such a clean surface, then everything else underneath the desk should reflect that. So much effort has put into maintaining the wires, not just underneath the desk, but everywhere else as well. Also, hats off to Evangelina for having not one or two, but three pencil drawers to keep the workspace tidy. Very nice. I also love the dedication to the color scheme. The primary PC powering the setup is a beautiful all white build inside the Zygmatic Aquarius, and it's packing some nostalgic specs. An i9-7920X, paired with an RTX 2080 Ti, which has been painted in white to match the color scheme. Remember the good old days when you can slot in eight memory sticks on an Intel board and SLI was a thing? I miss those days. Also, can we take a moment and appreciate that their dog is in the same color scheme with the setup? So the primary PC is used for gaming, while the media server PC is used for watching movies and anime. If it wasn't already obvious by the posters, but what's impressive about these is that she painted them herself. All the posters here on the wall took about six months to finish. I mean, the amount of detail in all of these is incredible. What an amazing creative setup to kick off the new season of Setup Wars. Thank you, Angelina, for sharing this masterpiece with us. Keeping the momentum going is Frothy's stunning minimalistic ultra-wide setup. So he's a freelance photographer from New Zealand that needed a space to edit videos and photos along with the occasional gaming. 
so he decided to start his setup journey two years ago and since then he's made modest upgrades to get it to a point where he's happy enough to come on the show. Let me just say, Frothy, you have absolutely nailed the execution here. I don't even have to look at the notes or the rest of the pictures. This right here is a flawless setup. The way you have the ultralight hooked up on the headboard with a sandwich tabletop underneath with accent lighting is just perfection. Frothy knew exactly where to add the lights to give the setup a three-dimensional look and I'm just honestly obsessed with it. So he does everything on the Titan Army 34-inch ultralight with a light bar attached on top to light up the surface since none of his peripherals have RGB. But I gotta say, man, it pains my soul to see you with that AliExpress knockoff mouse pad, okay? If you had a potato setup, I wouldn't have mind. In fact, I think that would have complemented your setup perfectly, but you're rocking a Rolls Royce with a toilet paper interior. I'll tell you what, hit me up on Discord and I'll send you a free tech source mouse pad if you want. Anyways, back to the setup. So both speakers are hooked up against the headboard for that clean floating look and all the wires are passed through it and tucked away behind the Alex unit. You won't be able to spot a single loose cable. It's practically flawless. Just like the PC, that's powering it all. I couldn't have built a more perfect system to complement the setup. It's compact, it fits the theme of the setup and it's got some pretty decent specs as well. The Ryzen 5 5600X paired with the Gigabyte Vision RTX 3060. By the way, huge thanks for the extra gorgeous shots of the PC outside. You didn't have to do that, but the fact that you put the extra effort to send in high quality pictures is greatly appreciated. And I'm sure my viewers also appreciate it as well. You've come a long way in the past two years. Seeing how your setup matured after every iteration allowed it to fully blossom into what it is today. Well done on this incredible masterpiece and thank you for coming on the show. Coming number three is our setup spotlight of the episode. Remember that segment? So T Queen is a university student from Saudi Arabia and this is the setup that she uses for gaming and streaming. The time it took for her to build her setup definitely reflects in the execution. And let's start off with the biggest inhibiting factor, the desk. I'm surprised, no, I'm flabbergasted that she went with something so small when she has so much wall space to work with. It's always a good idea to buy a desk slightly bigger than what you need, especially if you're planning on upgrading over the years. This way you don't have to keep upgrading the desk when your setup expands. Right now your space is very crowded with that PC on there and you hardly have enough mouse space. The mic is in a weird spot. You're really squeezing every inch of space you have left on that small desk and that results in a very awkward placement. This is definitely not optimal for streaming. I would highly recommend picking up a cheap boom arm to get it as close to your face as possible and leave some extra space on the desk in the process. You say you're a streamer, but you don't really have any tools to help you succeed. I would eventually invest in a cheap macro pad from Amazon. These will basically do the job of an Elgato Stream Deck, but on a super tight budget. You can also improve the cable management a lot by using Velcro straps or better yet, these magnetic cable ties instead. They are a lot easier to work with and they are reusable. You can use these to bundle up all the loose cables against the monitor mount in the back. I mentioned them in a previous Cooltech video, but I'll link them below for anyone interested. And lastly, please, for the love of Bruce Almighty, don't use ketchup and mustard cables with such a beautiful PC build. Cable extensions cost as low as $20 and they go a long way in a custom rig as opposed to those RGB hexagon shapes on the desk. Other than that, I really do think you have a pretty cool setup. You certainly have a nice presentation with those nano leaf triangles and the lines. You just need to work on getting the right gear. Speaking of which, you can save a ton of money next time by picking up these RGB lines from Amazon instead of nano leaf. They practically do the same thing and they are compatible with voice assistant, but you get them at a fraction of the price. As always, I'll drop a link to these below for anyone that wants to check them out for their setup. Shifting gears entirely and taking a break from the RGB insanity is a more mature workstation from Nathan, who's an architectural technologist from Vancouver, Canada. The setup is currently only used for work and content creation, and it was put together in just two hours, but we don't know the total time it took to save up for all the gear, considering he had a previous setup as well. We got a 34-inch LG Ultraride mounted to a sit-and-stand desk with wireless peripherals, the Logitech Ergo, 
paired with an MX Master 3 is pretty much the staple combo for productivity at this point. Other than that, he's got a pair of Edifier speakers to match the wood accents and some of his filming gear for a bit of decor and personality. At this point, I'm just as surprised as the dog that the setup is powered by a Windows PC instead of a Mac. It's rocking a Ryzen 7 2700X paired with a GTX 1660 Ti. I'm also surprised to see it on carpet without anything underneath it. And I'm also confused as to why he didn't put the PC on the smaller drawer on the right side. That would have been a much better location. Not only will the side window be facing him and off the ground, but there would have been much less cable slack between the PC and the rest of the gear. Still, a very clean, non-RGB workstation and a nice upgrade from your last setup. Thank you for sharing this with us. Last but not least, we are finishing up with Nick's updated Predator setup. He is back with another attempt to take home the seal. And I do want to start off by checking out this video first before I take a look at the pictures because it uh, looks like he prepared another epic intro it seems. Let's see what you got Nick. Me along with a lot of people on Discord server have been waiting for this day to come. Oh, some nice effects, okay. That's pretty sick. Getting Predator vibes already. There it is, ladies and gents. Oh, he did something to the background. Nice, nice. You did, you changed the background. Took our recommendations after all, I see. I love the glow in the dark blood. Oh, you got the smoke machine! No! You went all out on this video, Nick. Good stuff, good stuff. If it bleeds, you can kill it. Direct quote from, I think, the original Predator. Oh, that was good. That left me with some goosebumps. Wow. Okay, um, I don't even know where to start, to be honest. First and foremost, it's awesome that you took my recommendations from the previous video and you replaced the acoustic panels on the wall, which really didn't contribute to the whole Predator jungle theme that was going on. And the skulls did look like Halloween decorations, so I'm glad you took that change to heart. This definitely feels like you did the movie series justice by committing completely. Not only did you add a Predator theme to the style of the text, but you took it to another level with the glow-in-the-dark paint that looks like blood. Phenomenal work. Most of the setup does look to be the same. Nick is rocking a 74-inch Carly countertop with a few Alex units, but he did upgrade one of his monitors to the new Asus 27-inch OLED display with a 240Hz refresh rate. We got the same keyboard and mouse combo as before with a custom Predator Escape key that he made himself and a new TechSource mouse pad to help tie in the whole theme together. Nick isn't just a diehard fan of the series, he's an artist. As mentioned in the previous episode, he custom made and 3D printed most of the decor and the collectibles that you see here. But you really need to look closely to appreciate the attention to detail that he has put in all of the work. Like the custom 3D printed wall mines that he made and painted, but he didn't stop there. He added light inside for more realism. Here's another perfect example. He took the ordinary space above the IKEA shelf and he completely transformed it into a display to show off more of his 3D printed and custom painted collectibles. He trimmed the corners with a pyramid design from AVP1 and he covered the rest of the empty space with textured like stone which also was custom painted by him. It's pretty obvious at this point that Nick is dedicated to the Predator theme. In fact, I haven't seen this much dedication for a setup in a very long time. 345 hours of 3D printing alone, and that doesn't even include the custom paint time. I also love the fact that he even upgraded some of the areas of the custom PC that we built for him. Like the new 3D printed and painted fan shrouds, the Predator gauntlet holding up the screen, and the dread beads near the top. This submission is a true testament that if you want something so bad, you don't give up. And when you push yourself outside of your comfort zone, you will succeed. And God damn it, Nick, have you succeeded with this new setup. It brings me great pleasure to finally award you with what you have longed for since the beginning, the 57th seal of approval. 
I've never let anything or anyone's relationship with me affect who I give the seal of approval to. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're a loyal subscriber, if you're a patron, and even a friend, just like Nick. Okay, the seal cannot be bought, it is earned. And I've made that clear from the very beginning. You know, when I denied him the first time, it kind of broke me, but I had to stay true to what the seal represented. And I can say now without a doubt in my mind, this setup is worthy. So hit me up on Discord, Nick, I know you're watching, to claim your plaque and a brand new TechSource mousepad if you choose. And that's a wrap, boys and girls. Let me know in the comment section which of these setups absolutely blew you away. And also let me know if you guys enjoyed the new Season 7 intro of Setup Wars. Is it better than Season 6? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed the episode, make sure to toss a like before you head out. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon in the next video.